Did you know that lots of the plants we grow in the legal industry are covered in thousands of these tiny little bugs? They look really gross, they are everywhere in the garden, they are all over the plants you eventually buy in the dispensary, and nobody is trying to do anything about it. I've been working in the cannabis industry for about six years now, and on this channel I like to show people parts of the industry that they usually wouldn't get to see. Like we're going to be doing in this video where we discuss the bugs that are on your weed. We're going to look at what these bugs are and why they are different than the normal bugs you may have heard of before. Then I'm going to show you some of these special bugs that are in a grow room that I was working in and I'm going to show you why even though everybody knew these bugs were on the plants, nobody ever tried to do anything about it. So the weed that we grow in the legal industry in Colorado has to be tested for pesticides, mold, yeast, heavy metals, potency, water activity, but it isn't tested for bugs. There are a lot of different types of insects that can harm a cannabis crop, even when you are growing indoors. And commercial crops like these are always trying to avoid infestations from all types of different bugs and pests like thrips, fungus gnats, aphids, and spider mites. Most of these big grows have someone, or in some cases, a whole team of people dedicated to maintaining an integrated pest management, or IPM, schedule that consists of multiple fungicides and pesticides that are used to fight against molds, mildews, and all kinds of these different types of pests. But this isn't always enough. Sometimes the pests build up a resistance to the pesticides and they still thrive, even when the plants are being sprayed. This is actually very common at large commercial grows and every grow I have ever worked at has had some kind of bug problem at one point or another. And some of them had bug problems for the entire time I worked there and probably long after. And since since these problems can get really bad in these big grows and there are only certain things that you can legally spray on the plants, sometimes you have to do what you might least expect. Thanks to Mars Hydro for helping me spread this info. Mars Hydro is your one-stop shop for all your home growing needs, like smart grow systems, grow tents, ventilation kits, or this FC6500 grow light with Samsung LED chips. Mars Hydro has been making home growing gear for over 10 years. They have fast shipping, competitive prices, and their stuff comes with a five-year warranty just in case anything ever happens. If you want to grow your very own herbs at home, go to MarsHydro.com to start your new garden today. Use the code STRANGESHOW to save some extra money and you can have some homegrown buds of your own in no time. This little box and all of these little orange and white bags are all full of bugs and they are everywhere in this garden and all over this weed. But these aren't normal bugs. These boxes release two species and these bags release two species. So this is four different types of bugs that the IPM team was putting right in the garden and hanging directly on the plants all the time. And they were apparently spending a good amount of money to do this. And there is a good reason they were doing this, but as you are about to see, everything that's good for the grower isn't always good for you as the consumer. All of these bugs that are being brought in are predatory mites of some some kind and they all love to eat common pests that are harmful to cannabis crops like spider mites, thrips, and aphids. And this is great for the grower because these predatory bugs eat the other bugs that would normally be destroying or feeding on the weed plants. This also means in theory that they should have to use less pesticides on the plants that you're eventually going to smoke. But while I was working in this garden and they brought in these beneficial bugs, they never really lowered the amount of pesticides they were spraying. I I think they were eventually trying to cut back and spray less pesticides, but first they had to knock down the bugs to a low enough population where the predatory bugs would actually be able to make a difference. So you might be thinking, well, what about all the bugs they put on my wheat? Am I smoking all those tiny little bugs? Because the end consumer doesn't really care if we trade out one type of bug for another type of bug. They just don't want to have bugs on their medicine when they get it. But sometimes these bugs can make it all the way to your house. There was once a big story about consumers that had been finding bugs and bud they got at Ontario Dispos where tons of people were posting pictures on Reddit of weed they bought that had bugs all over it. All of the bud came from a company called ReadyCan and the lead grower defended their buggy weed when he was interviewed on the local news. So what is it that people think they're seeing then when they're looking at their bud? and saying, oh, I, I think there's little insects. So on a microscopic level, you can have things like these, which are persimilis, which are used to control or prevent 
um, things like spider mites in our crops. But on a microscopic level, it is possible that this could be on our product. But it, we stand behind our products in an organic type of way of growing, and we have no reason to believe that this would, or we, we know that this does not have any sort of ill effects on anybody. And it's actually a safer product because we don't use things like pesticides. Are people supposed to see those on their bud though when they, by the time they get to, you know, the shelves? Um, for the most part, these will fall off in the drying process. Okay. And then we examine again during the trimming process. And to be fair, I never actually saw this happen myself at this grow I was working at. The predatory bugs all seem to have a pretty short life cycle. So if you just don't replace the little boxes and bags towards the end of harvest, they're all dead by the time you cut the weed down anyways. But by the time the weed was all dried and trimmed, I was never able to see any of those bugs in the weed that we had on the shelf. But other people have not been so lucky. What do you think? Would you rather have weed? with bugs on it or weed that had been sprayed with approved pesticides. A lot of pesticides get used in the industry and I want as little as possible of that stuff on my weed. But I also don't really want to see bugs all over my weed either. But most of the grows I have seen couldn't really get away with just using beneficial insects because there are just too many of the bad bugs that are already established for the predator mites to really make any kind of difference. So even if they are using predatory bugs, they could still be using some other types of pesticide sprays. Or you could just end up with moldy weed like the stuff that was being sold in this video by Cookies here in Denver. Make sure you watch this video if you ever buy pre-packaged flour because you don't want to get this. I'll see you there. Peace.